If you live in the same world as I do, chances are you know of someone who volunteers, or you even volunteer yourself. Yes, I volunteered for six years in the church for a group children to help with their, uh, yeah, we call it Formsel. I haven't volunteered for a specific organization. I mean, I've definitely volunteered to help my friends with their projects, but not specific volunteering. I'm uh, volunteering at the moment uh, in the church. Uh, many of people, they are not able to go to the church. They are uh, maybe too old or uh, too sick. Uh, I uh, try to visit them and, uh, and make uh, some less uh, lonely. I'm volunteering in animal um, yeah, protection. My husband and I, we help uh, animals who are uh, on the street, who live on the street, so we give them uh, a place and we care for them and then we give them to some people who wants to care for them further. I taught refugees here in The Hague for a couple of, year, couple of months and I volunteered in Nepal before for a couple of months as well. About 150 million people around the world volunteer every day. That is three times the population of Italy. But what do these people actually do? What pushes them to do it and do they gain something from it? Um, I'm Florine van Lokeren, I'm 22 years old, uh, living in Amsterdam for almost my whole life. And um, I've studied medicine for three years now and um, yeah. I volunteered before, not in a, a war zone or in a, a place that was hit by a natural disaster or something, but just in Holland. Um, because before you, uh, if, if you want to study medicine in Holland, you have to do things like that, like volunteer. And um, I did that in, in um, by the elder, elderly, just give them coffee, a walk with them. I think I was 16 then. And it felt good to do that. Um, you saw them being happy and um, yeah, that gives you as a person a good, a good feeling. <laughs> I think volunteering is great. Um, it doesn't matter how, how big or how little the volunteering is, you can always make a difference and um, it is and always be much needed. My name is Antonio Galante, I'm 21 years old and I'm studying international business. I'm volunteering at the Red Cross in Vienna uh, as a paramedic and it's a very adventurous experience. You adventure every day, like when you work, you adventure every day completely different stuff and the main aim is like to help people that need help. We had a course, like it was about one and a half month and then you got a certification and then you're like a state proof paramedic. So we learn all the skills in this one and a half course. I started in 2015 because I had to do the civil service in Vienna and therefore I was working there full time for nine months. And after that I decided to be volunteer there. And now I'm working there, I would say, once a month if it comes on because with university and all this, all this other stuff it's of course difficult but I would I try at least once a month to do my service there. I started to be a volunteer because I found that this was a very nice job first of all because it was a nice experience and second of, uh, second of all because you can combine it with helping people which is something in my opinion that is very good and that helps the community to get even better and better every day. Out of this experience, I gained, I think, the ability to know how to interact with different kind of people because, of course, when you help someone, you cannot decide who you're going to help. The experience that had the most impact on me, it was my first uh, transport as a, as a paramedic. And it was uh, on the 24th of December, so on Christmas. And the, um, the thing was that we had to, to bring a patient from the hospital back home. But this patient was sure that she, like, she, she was 58 I think and she had uh, uh, lung cancer so she was supposed to die for sure and on the way back we were in the car and it was her and her daughter who was 17 years old so sitting so her daughter sitting to the mother that is going to be to die on Christmas and it was like I was there sitting for half an hour with them in the car and you can imagine I'm a very communicative person but there was like silence for 30 minutes. I had no idea what to say because it was my first transport. I had no experience. I was 17 years old and it was like, you know, every word can be a wrong word. So I prefer to either say nothing than maybe say something wrong. And yeah, and yeah, like I said, this was my first ever transport as a paramedic and it's still 
still reminds uh, is in my mind because it was a very heavy moment where I didn't know how to handle the situation. But I would say that now, after my experience, I would know what to say. So this is something good for me. And but yeah, still it was very very heavy at that point. My name is uh, Lisan. I'm uh, 28 years. I studied med school in Leiden. Afterwards, I um, worked at the surgery department for a year. And for now, for one and a half years, I'm doing a GP specialization, so the general practitioner specialization. I did some uh, volunteering in Lesbos, in Greece. I volunteered in some kind of NGO, uh, Stichting Bootvluchteling is called. Uh, and uh, the aim of the NGO was to help uh, the refugees who arrived by boat from the uh, Turkish coast. I was there for two weeks. I gave medical aid, but sometimes when it wasn't needed, uh, I also helped uh, my colleagues with um, helping the people off the boat, give them dry clothes, food. I think it was um, very impressive that I was there. I was standing at the uh, coastline and I saw the boats coming. And then I realized that, that I was standing in the middle of something big that was in the news everywhere. And that, that I was one of the persons who were actually helping. And then I thought it, it is really weird that there are so many people in my, in my environment or in the Netherlands or Europe or anywhere who also know about this, but they're not, not doing anything. And I also saw how grateful people were. Uh, that you were helping them um, and sometimes even a little bit too grateful because those people were like suffering, they left everything they had, they risked their lives to come over here and even then they were grateful to you that you were helping them while you were just in a, you're living in a safe country, you, you can do everything you want, you can go on holiday, you have all your stuff, your family together, everything. So I think it was really a yeah, nice experience to see that they were so grateful even while they didn't have anything anymore. My colleagues were inspiring because uh, they all had a different background and also that you put just all, all people together that are not, they don't know each other, but they're from uh, day one, they are a group with one uh, mission uh, and that is to help the refugees and uh, having that one same goal connects people and they will just work together like they were working together for already 10 years or something. You know? And I think it's really, um, yeah, that's really inspiring. In our journey to explore the lives and minds of volunteers, we asked ourselves, is this positive impact all there's to it? Or is there an unexplored negative side to it as well? I mean, I think it depends what organization you're volunteering for um, and what you're, what you're trying to help, I guess. I, mean, I guess it depends um, what kind of volunteering and where as well, because you see sometimes now this volunteerism that is happening in, uh, in developing countries, which, well, we all need to be a little careful about, I guess, because you don't want people profiting of, of other people's misery. It is admirable to donate your time to helping those less fortunate. There are growing calls for Aussies to stop volunteering at orphanages in Asia and elsewhere. Seduced by colourful pamphlets and motivated by the chance to change the world for the better, Australians are fond of jetting off to developing countries to help kids in need. Sadly though, in parts of Southeast Asia, kids are being exploited by adults running dodgy orphanages, places that lure volunteers in and do nothing to help children. And up to 80% of them still have one living parent. My name is Constanza Ferreiro. I'm from Argentina, Buenos Aires, and I'm studying uh, European Studies in the Hague University. I think uh, volunteer as a whole is like people praise it. Um, first of all, because I think they value it a lot without even recognize that uh, it's even more harmful than even a good thing. Uh, volunteering in the third world, uh, I think like people stay there for a li limited period of time and maybe they, for example, in a school in Africa or in India, they make a relationship with those people and then they leave and they uh, leave those people alone and they still have problems, you know. I thought of being a volunteer, yeah, but then I realized that um, I have no the skills for doing that. I think that you have to be prepared for that. Also, um, I lack of time. I have to do a lot of things, and in this time of my life, I, I would not rather do it. A couple of friends of mine um, who went to Africa, 
and uh, went to the, the schools and volunteered. But I think they just volunteered because of the volunteering. Um, because those little kids, um, they, they, they really like um, the people who come there, the, the, the girls with the blonde hair. And, but after one or two months, they just go and go back to their normal lives in, yeah, for example, Holland. And the kids, uh, yeah, they are left behind. And I think that's, that's a sad thing. I think volunteering can have a negative impact. Um, I can um, tell you an example of my own uh, volunteering uh, period because uh, when I started the first week, uh, the NGO was uh, Stichting Bootvluchteling wasn't very organized yet. It was it started very small and it, it grew like um, in a few weeks to quite a big organization. Uh, and you should ima imagine that when you were on the island. Uh, the boats were just coming over and over and over, so it's, it's, there was not an end point, you know. It's, you started at seven, you help people from the boat, and at one or two or three in the night the boats were still arriving. Or when you were having dinner after uh, a working day from seven in the morning till eight in the evening, um, you were sitting outside and then you heard people screaming that were that uh, refugees were arriving uh, and what all the people did was stand up and run and help people from the boat and that's okay for one day or two days or three days uh, but after a week when you when you don't have any shifts and you're just reacting on anything that happens uh, to help the people then after a few days you're just you're, you're nothing worth anymore because you're so exhausted and tired because you don't sleep uh, enough and you don't eat normally and also sometimes it's hard that you want to help people but you cannot give them the help they need uh, and you have to be able to accept that. As a paramedic you came across of course also really bad situations for example car incidents where people are hurt and everything so like this is something negative for you that you have to experience that. I think it definitely needs some special character characteristic of your personality to, to be there because you have to be like a strong person in this kind of terms because of course what you will see blood you will see broken legs whatever so like I hope you don't see that but of course it can be so you have to be very tough to, to do that and if you're not then maybe there is not this is not the right job for you in the Netherlands there are over 80 non-profit organizations Many cities have volunteer centers that offer workshops and help you find the right organization for you to volunteer. So my name is Tatiana Brazeral and I'm the project manager of Volunteer Day project. It's uh, organized by the social uh, non-profit organization PAC and it's uh, funded by the municipality of Dehaid. We serve kind of as a bridge between local non-profit organizations and internationals in the city of Dehaid, meaning that we help them connect with each other. And my entire team is run uh, on, on volunteers. They are volunteers. Uh, and I found them through the project, through the website, through Volunteer the Hague project. I'm probably one of the first um, examples that come to mind because I'm international myself and uh, I came to this country three and a half years ago and I started as a volunteer. I didn't want to stay at home, I, I just, the, the, the stress, the, the weather, the everything started creeping up on me and I just thought, okay, it's time to do something with my life. It really helped me so much to be part of, uh, of the community, to be part of the group and it gave me that feeling of belonging and I believe that's exactly what uh, volunteers, what people that are looking to volunteer, they're looking to have that, that feeling of belonging to something, to the community, uh, to to establish their network, because as internationals we come here, we don't have the support network. We basically don't know anybody. The country is strange, the language is different, uh, the, the, the mentality is totally different. And well, for some it's different, for some it's less different, but it's still a challenge for all of us. So volunteering definitely helps with, uh, with that. In between the benefits, it can even help to find a job. Quite often I come across uh, different excuses that people have. And, um, and these excuses, they vary from weather, from finding uh, uh, the, the childcare, from all, you name it. And uh, 
migraines are even not a reason for somebody not to find a volunteer job. So it really depends on a person. When somebody is dedicated and willing, they will find a way. If this statement applies to volunteering, what is still holding people back? I mean, it's obviously a commitment in terms of time. I guess it's time, really. Well, to passing time if you don't have a job or you are retired. Now I don't have time. I always feel too busy, like I don't have time. Yeah, because I have time, eh? I'm retired. It's more comfortable to sort of swipe it aside and move on with your own life. I don't believe everyone is busy. You can make time if you really want to. I think for most people, the reason they want to do it but they don't do it is that they are, uh, don't have enough time, they have other priorities. And I think the longer time that is between my volunteering in Lesbos and now, you are just getting more and more busy with the, your daily life. Obstacles for me not to go volunteer, um, that would be time and finances, I think, because yeah, living costs money, so uh, I have to live from something. So when you ask me what is there that can stop people from volunteering, my aunt, only answer is it's, it's themselves. It's really themselves who are stopping them from volunteering. If they legally can volunteer, then no weather, no migraine, no child care, nothing. Where, where there is a will, there is a will. As much as volunteering may help others in need, some argue it could also help you. What are they taking from this experience? The impact the volunteering has on my daily life as a professional doctor now, I think most important is that I have a better feeling with uh, refugees I sometimes see in my GP practice. Um, so I more realize where they come from and what they suffered and what they uh, went through before they came here. Yeah, that's really helpful in my career. And I think that improves my quality of being a doctor or a GP. Well, as a doctor, it, it makes you uh, definitely a better doctor. You have to deal with the few resources uh, available and um, you become creative, I think, because you have to be open-minded and um, in emergency situations you be taught to work very quickly and I think it's good to see something of the real world of how the world can be and not yeah, just the Western world. I think this experience would help my professional life uh, in a good way because uh, first of all it's always good for your CV. If we talk in terms of business, the, the more thing you do of course the better it is and also not only for my professional life but I think also for my normal life it helps me because I know how to react in certain emergency situations you can say so I know how to handle it. So uh, when you go home you have a good feeling. I don't do it for the good feeling but you have a good feeling. You don't get paid to do it so why would you do something if you don't get anything back? That's, that's what most people think but um, actually what you get back is a lot greater than money. I mean, I think they want to make a change in the world or they're just really selfish and it makes them feel good. <laughs> Either way, it's good in general, I think. It's given me uh, yeah, new insights and also just reflecting my own position a little bit on vis-a-vis uh, -vis, yeah, people that have are slightly less uh, privileged, I guess, than I am. Well, I think if everyone's selfish in the way of making the world a better place to, to also feel good about themselves since they're in the world then I think that's a positive thing. I think being selfish in a worldwide sense where you're like let's make the world better, let's make myself better, let's make the world better, then I think it's a positive thing. The idea of volunteering seems to be beneficial not only for others around you but also for yourself. However, one has to be prepared and conscious in choosing the right cause for the right reason, as it sometimes can have a negative impact on other people's lives.